you can think of what we're talking about here in two different ways. And this, of course, again, is non-duality. Non-duality means that all boundaries and dualities and categories must collapse. So, of course, you must expect that the duality between subject and object must ultimately collapse. But you can think of that in two ways. You can think that the object disappears and only the subject remains, or you can think of the subject disappears and only the object remains. So what that means in this example is that you can think of it as what I'm saying is that it's as though the external world is not real and never actually existed. So that external material objective world that you thought was out there behind your perceptions, causing your perceptions, what we're saying here is that there's no such thing. It never existed. Another way to say that is to say that appearance is reality. There's nothing more to reality than appearance. So that's sort of one side of this coin. But actually, there's sort of a rather more profound way to think about it, which is actually the exact opposite way, which is not to eliminate the external world, but rather to eliminate the internal world. You know, because if we eliminate the external world, then all you might think there is is just the internal world, just appearances. And appearances we think of as the internal world. But now think of it the other way, the second way. You can think of it as, imagine that the internal world is not real and never existed. And that all there ever was, was the external world. But you have mistaken the external world for the internal world. And so now we're reinterpreting it and putting it in its proper place such that what you thought was the internal world, all of this of all these colors and sensations, right? This is what I mean by the internal world. You've thought about this as being the internal world because, um, you know, of course, these we, we call these by definition subjective. We say that, well, certain people can be colorblind, so they'll see a certain color, but then another person won't see that same color, or, you know, maybe like a dog, they say, has black and white vision, dog can't see in color. So you would think that, well, if a dog is looking at that flower, he's seeing it in black and white. And when I'm looking at the flower, I'm seeing red and yellow and blue and green and all these other colors. So we're thinking that these are like, you know, our individual bubbles and that these are subjective internal worlds that biological creatures create using their brains. But no, no, no. What I'm saying now is that forget all that. There never was an internal world. What you thought was the internal world is actually the external world. So what this means is, is that the external world, we're changing really kind of like the definition of what the external world means here. The external world is not something behind the scenes that is hidden that you never get to interact with. It's the exact opposite. The internal world is completely open to you and not hidden from you at all. Now, at first glance, you might say, well, Leo, these are like polar opposites ways of thinking about reality. Which way is correct? Uh, but actually, they're identical. They're identical. It's just different ways of looking at it, different perspectives. Notice that in both of these examples, the raw data doesn't change. The colors all stay the same. The shapes stay the same. The sounds stay the same. The feelings in the body stay the same. All that's changing is how you're interpreting all of that. And that's extremely significant. That's life-changing stuff. Don't think of interpretation as just some, ah, oh, it's just some interesting philosophical mumbo jumbo. No, 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 no. Interpretation is everything here because now what I want you to imagine is that as you're sitting here right now, imagine being able to reinterpret your very experience that's happening right now, all the colors and sounds and sights. Imagine reinterpreting that so radically that you actually cease to exist you reinterpret yourself out of existence because you're removing the subject. What you thought was an experience or a perception where there was, 
you back here, the subject, and the object out there, that you back here and the subject, that just gets completely eliminated like it never even existed. That's that empty rectangle from the negative space. That gets eliminated, and now all that you see is you just see the material, the substrate that was that was carving out that negative square or rectangle. See? So literally, if you're able to accomplish this, you reinterpret yourself out of existence. And that's pretty radical. It's pretty radical. Because then you no longer think of this, everything that's going on here, as your life. It stops being personal. It's no longer your life. It's no longer your perceptions. What is it? It's been universalized. This is universal. It's being rather than perception. And that's one of the key things I want you to take away from this episode. The difference between experience, perception, which are the same, and being, which is different. I use the word being sometimes in my various talks but people don't really register what being is. And they can't because they don't understand what perception is. So that's why this episode is so important because it draws the distinction between perception and being. So the definition of being is perception minus the ego. Or experience minus the ego is being. And uh, another way to phrase it is that what perception is, is being plus ego. So when we take experience and we separate off the subject and we kill the subject and all we have is the object, that's being. That is like when you were imagining an object or the color red just floating out in the middle of empty space like an asteroid that existed 10 billion years ago before there were any sentient creatures in the universe. That was being, because there was no subject there. And then conventionally, what you've been experiencing your whole life is perception or experience, which is an illusion. Because really, perception or experience really is nothing but being. You see, there is no difference between being and perception other than the way that you interpret it, or rather the way you misinterpret it. So perception and experience is actually, technically speaking, a misinterpretation of being. 